Welcome back to SGT v 2.3.2 and also SBS v 2.01 and SMC 2.11 as well. Uh, today we're going to be going over a new feature of the toolbox aspect of all three of my data packs, which if you don't know is the core library of my resource packs. This is kind of like functionality that is shared across each of them. So if you have any one of these data packs installed, you will actually have access to this ability. Now today's function is in regards to a panorama maker, which is basically a set of commands that will teleport you around and tell you when to take the screenshot so that you can take a perfect panorama uh, within Minecraft to use on the home menu screen. Now, I'm not going to go into a massive explanation today of how to make a resource pack to use this. I'm just kind of expecting that the kind of people who would use this are the kind of people who would be knowledgeable enough already to know what this is for and how it benefits them and what they can really use it for in the future. So the function that we're going to be seeing is function toolbox and then panorama is the name of the panorama uh, and what this will essentially do is count up a scoreboard which will trigger certain events such as teleporting the player facing in different directions and also playing a sound to tell you when you need to take a screenshot. Now obviously the way I have the window set up right now is not going to be suitable for our square images because if you don't know a panorama on the menu screen is made up of six square images. They can be anywhere from 512 bit to 1024 to 2048. Uh, really it's entirely up to you what resolution you want to take them at. So in order to progress with this right now all I'm going to have to do is close down Minecraft and reopen it with certain resolution and I'll show you how to do that just now. Okay, so here we are on the desktop. Uh, I'm going to open up Minecraft and I'm going to quickly show you how you can change the resolution in game uh, that will come up when you open Minecraft. So if you go over to the installations tab and pick the option that you want to do, obviously if you do want to take a nice screenshot and you have things like shaders installed or a nice resource pack that's Optifine reliant, then you are more than welcome to do this on an Optifine type profile. Uh, below all the settings here, you'll have obviously the name, the version, the game directory, and then here you'll have the resolution as well. Now you can pick all different kinds of resolution. Here you can see we we have uh, the standard 1920 by 1080 p and 3K as well. Uh, no option for 4K, weirdly enough. I mean, I don't have a 4K monitor, so that makes sense, but still. Now, what you want to do is you want to change these two numbers to the same thing. Now, again, you can do 512 by 512, and that will give you a relatively high resolution screenshot, which still looks really nice. But if you want to, you can also just go for 1024 by 1024. Now, once again, I am playing on a 1080p monitor, which means that I can fit the full 1024 kind of resolution on my monitor and that works fine so we're going to do that and we'll go to play and play minecraft and you'll immediately see that once the game launches it's going to be a really awkward looking square and that is entirely intentional as we'll see in a second yeah so there you go <laughs> so minecraft 52 but it's a square that and it instantly goes to full screen because some screen wasn't it yeah, that's fine. But anyway, yeah, so that actually leads me to the second point as well. Uh, while you are doing this trick, if you want to switch between uh, windowed mode and full screen, it's actually a really easy way to be able to play the game more properly if you wanted to move yourself around in game, for example, because obviously playing at this resolution is a little bit strange. Uh, it's obviously not the best way to play Minecraft. If we load into a game here, you can see it's... Um, yeah, it's very weird. I can't really see a lot of what's going on. Although, that's what we need to take the screenshot. So yeah, once you're all you need to do is go to the escape menu, go to options and change your FOV to 90 to show a 90 degree angle in front of the player. And then we're ready to take off screenshots. So line yourself up. I'm going to line myself up around here, I think, just so I've got these lovely trees here and some new textures I've been working on. And then we just simply need to run the function. So again, we'll type function, toolbox, and then scroll down to panorama, as you can see there. Now, the way this is going to work is it will give you a countdown of three, two, one. While that's happening, you need to press F1 to turn your hood off. And then every time you hear the camera sound, you need to take a screenshot. So there will be six in total. And I'll be showing you very quickly today what you can do with those six screenshots. Obviously, I'm not going to go into detail of how to make a resource pack, as I said. Uh, but I will show you how to move those around, how to name them. Uh, and then obviously show you that it does work perfectly just afterwards as well. So again, we want to hit the run command. And we'll see three, two, one. And now... And there it was. That was the full process. So you can see there that I took a total of six images. We have one, two, three, four, five, six there. And that is every single direction already correctly formatted for our panorama. So now the next thing we need to do is just simply come out of the game and then we can navigate to our appropriate files and we can get the files 
from our screenshots folder. So I'm just going to quickly open that up on my other screen because the file browser opened there. And here we are. So you can see I've been taking a few of these already, some test versions, uh, just checking what works and what doesn't work. It's worth noting, by the way, I probably should have mentioned this before, but when you are taking these screenshots, make sure that you don't have anything like a speed buff or if you're flying in game as well, because that will actually alter your FOV just slightly. Um, I believe if you have Optify installed, you can actually turn off the FOV being changed when you have things like speed or if you're sprinting or if you're flying. Personally, I like to have those on. I like to have the indication that things are faster, um, but you do need to have that perfect 90 FOV to get this right. So make sure that you either aren't flying, don't have a speed buff, uh, or for example, if you do, then you might need to kind of adjust things. If you want, if you wanted to get into a position where you are flying, it'd be easier to place a barrier block to stand on perhaps, or obviously just adjust the FOV to try and get it to that 90 taking into account the changes that will have been made by the speed buff. So anyway, so these are our six screenshots here. You can see they are formatted in order. Uh, I have this folder formatted by uh, date in the opposite direction. So in other words, this is the most recent one and the last one is the most um, is the oldest one, I guess you would say, yeah. Uh, so yeah, these are the six screenshots we need. You can see roughly they look, you know, they look quite nice. You can see here, this it's a pretty good screenshot. It's just a square. It doesn't, it doesn't look as bad now, does it? It looks really weird when you're playing, but it doesn't look nearly as bad now. Um, so yes, anyway, we need to move these to the appropriate folder and then rename them. So I'm gonna go to Shortcuts, Stop Minecraft, Resource Packs, Kilesti, Assets, Minecraft, Textures, GUI, Title, and then we need to have a new folder here called Background, I believe, so I'll just do that. Um, in fact, am I naming this right? Let me just quickly check. Uh, pictures, I have like a, a folder here for um, the default resource pack stuff. So Minecraft, textures, GUI, title, background. It is background, okay, perfect, yeah. And again, as you can see here, the naming conventions that we need are panorama underscore zero through to five for all six of those. And again, the way that you can check these are in the right order is the last one is always looking directly upwards. At, and the second to last one is already is always looking directly upwards at the sky. And the last one is looking downwards at the floor. So again, we'll go into background. I'm gonna paste the images that we copied before over here. Uh, they're not gonna be in the right order for some reason. Let me just refresh the folder. There we go. So. I don't know why they paste in the wrong order for some reason sometimes. Uh, and we'll just change the name of these. So panorama underscore zero. And there we go. And it's worth noting as well that when you're doing this, making sure that you have all the spellings correct, because again, with it being textures, uh, the file names do have to be very precise. So again, it's panorama for each of these. And again, it is just worth making sure that each of these are right. Obviously, when you load in game, you will notice if any of these are broken, it will just look quite funky. Uh, it'll just have that tile of the panorama replaced with the vanilla Minecraft one. Um, but yeah, that's funny in itself. So if you do get to see that, that's obviously kind of a, uh, an interesting thing to see. But then you can just simply come back to the folder and rename these afterwards anyway. So next thing we want to do is open up Minecraft. I'm going to very quickly uh, fix my weird resolution that we have by again going to installations back here again and the resolution I have my windowed browser at is 1824 by 1026 and then I'm going to launch up the game. So upon loading into the game, you will see that our Panorama Maker has worked perfectly. Uh, I'm going to let this circle around for a few seconds while I do talk a little bit about this pack and everything about it, uh, just for you guys to be aware of. So as I said today, I, again, if you were looking for some sort of tutorial on how to actually make a, man, a, back pan a background panorama, uh, then I'm sorry that I couldn't supply the details for making a resource pack. But again, I assume that this tool has been created for people who already know how to make a background panorama and just simply want this convenient tool to be able to take the pictures very, very quickly. Again, usually what you would have to do is obviously exit out of game, change the resolution. You have to singly press the screenshot buttons, which is annoying. Uh, but um, unfortunately, I can't really automate any of that with a data pack. I, you could potentially do that with mods. And I know some mods do have a panorama maker even built into them, such as Quark or just mods that exist for that purpose, such as panorama maker. Um, but yeah, this is just my attempt at making sure that you can do this with a data pack relatively easily um, so that you can still have this feature for any Minecraft world up to 115.2. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, obviously, this is a tool for resource pack makers, not really so much a data pack thing, but I'm still going to include it in all of the library files for uh, SGT, SMC, and SBS as well. Um, at some point in the future, when we do upgrade all our data packs into the new project, Resurgence of the Void, uh, I will actually be including this as an add-on, a simple side thing, so you can just simply have the panorama make a data pack on its own. Uh, but obviously, all of the toolbox functions such as this and the file in which you can view the paintings and the villages and zombie villages, those will all be included in the main data pack as well. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this is my little showcase of how to use and how to fully make use of the um, background panorama maker that is now included in all my data packs. Uh, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to go download. Go make some cool background panoramas. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's it, really. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.
باي باي